Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters will be taking a look at a pretty interesting teaching on this evening. And the heading of this teaching, the rain upon the earth. The rain upon the earth. My brothers and sisters, as we very well know, God sends us similitudes on the earth to show us those things that we're to recognize in scriptures, rain upon the earth. So we very well know from Genesis to Revelation that rain or water is known as knowledge. So we have to understand these things as we are reading and studying the word of God and as we're going through scripture. And we also have to make sure that we understand the earth, the earth. The similitudes that are recorded here in the Bible helps us to understand those parables and the mysteries and secrets of God's words through his precepts, the rain upon the earth. So my brothers and sisters, I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper, and as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started, and let's walk through Scripture to see what Thus says the Most High God, the rain upon the earth. So we'll start right here, my brothers and sisters, right here at Psalms 65 and verse 9, and it's recorded. Thou visiteth the earth and watereth it. Thou greatly enricheth it with the river of Yahweh, which is full of water. Thou prepareth them corn when thou hast so, so provided for it. So we see clearly, my brothers and sisters, that the Most High God sends us his reign. He sends us his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. And we benefit a great deal from that providing we're tilling the ground from whence we've come, and we're cultivating the field to make sure that the earth or the field is being tended to. So from here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 5, verse 10. And it's recorded. Who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields? And we clearly know that it's Yahweh that does these things. See, the earth, we have to understand the earth that represents us. We are the earth. So if we understand that these bodies are from the earth, then we have to see that similitude that God is showing us. That being said, we have to also understand that everything God has created is from a seed. We have to see that. Everything God created is of a seed. So if it's of a seed, that seed is planted where? In the earth. So just for a second, let's, let's pivot just for a moment. And we're going to go right here to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we'll hit verses... 36, I believe it is. I apologize, 38. And it's recorded. But Yahweh giveth it a body as it had pleased him, and to every seed his own body. So we clearly know that this seed that has been planted in us by the Most High God is his word. And you can find that information in Luke 8 and 11. So when we're going through scripture and we're reading and studying or we're doing an independent study we want to always keep these similitudes in mind that God is showing us so we can get the understanding spiritually of what it is that we're seeking after or if we're seeking after what his truth is we have to be able to recognize the similitudes that he's showing us physically so we can get the understanding spiritually okay so let's just go back to our teaching Let's go from here to Acts. Acts 14 and verse 17. 
and is regarded. Nevertheless, he left not himself without witness, and that he did good, and gave us rain from heaven, and fruitful seasons, filling our hearts with food and gladness. So we see clearly that this richness that God is sending us is coming directly from him. Out of where? Out of the heavens. So if Mary, let's continue to build on that. Let's go to Leviticus. We'll go to Leviticus chapter 26. And we're going to hit right here at verse 4. And it's recorded. Then will I give you rain in due season, and the land shall yield her increase, and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit. Exactly the point. So this rain we see, my brothers and sisters, clearly is the instruction given to the earth to bring forth what's contained in the seed that has been planted in the sea, in the earth. Excuse me. Why are you with me? So from here, let's go to Job. And we'll continue to build on this understanding. Job chapter 2, and we'll hit verses 23 and 24. And it's recorded. Bleak, excuse me, be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Spirit of God, your guide. For he hath given you former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain from the former rain and the latter rain. And the first month. So we see, my brothers and sisters, that this rain is the knowledge and the wisdom of God. And it's coming down from the heavens unto the earth. So we have to understand that if this seed has been planted in us by the Most High God, it has to bring forth the fruit that's contained in the seed, as we very well know. So we have to understand that those things, those works, of that fruit that's contained in, within the seed, should be the fruits of the Spirit. Are you with me? So from here, let's read verse 24, and it's recorded. And the floor shall be full of wheat, and the fats shall overflow with wine and with oil. So we see clearly, this is all the goodness of God's Word, which the rain has sent from heaven that bears from the knowledge and the instruction of the seed that's contained in the earth. Are you with me? So from here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 34 and verse 26. And it's recorded. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. That's a full thought. And I will cause the shower to come down in his season. That's a full thought. There shall be showers of blessings. So we see there's going to be showers of blessings. What's the knowledge and understanding of the Most High God's word? So we have to continually search the scriptures for the for the truths so we're able to understand those things that is presented to us around us my brothers and sisters we must understand that these things around us are similitudes of the things that's recorded here in scripture that God wants us to see physically so we can get those things those understanding spiritually so we have to continue to search the scriptures for the truth, but we must also use those things that's, that's around us, okay? So from here, let's go to, let's hit verse 27, and it's recorded. And the tree of the field shall yield her fruit, and the earth shall yield her increase, and they shall be safe in their land, and shall know that I am the Spirit of God when I have broken the bands of their yoke and delivered them out of the hand of those that serve themselves of them. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 30. 
And we'll look at verse 23. And it's recorded. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, that thou shalt sow the ground withal, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. And that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures. So we see right here, my brothers and sisters, God has planted that seed in the earth, in you. We have to understand, we have to see that similitude. So we'll come back. Let's pivot just for a moment. And let's go to a Sirach, to some Ecclesiasticus. Verse 33, chapter 33, and verse 10. And it's recorded. And all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of the earth. Again, my brothers and sisters, Elder Jenkins is notorious when he sees this word here, or the earth. He's notorious for making that separation. He'll always, if you notice, he'll always say Adam, or man, or Israel, male and female. He's consistent with making that, that uh, distinct separation, whether it be Adam, man, or including the earth. So we have to see those similitudes. So let's reiterate this text again. And all men are from the ground, and Adam was created of the earth. So we see, my brothers and sisters, that these bodies are from the earth. So we have to consistently see that similitude. Because if we understand that, then this rain, this knowledge that comes down from heaven, is going to be, provide, it provides instruction. And it's going to, the seed that's planted in us, is going to identify the knowledge in which, or the wisdom in which it was created. So once we have received that rain from heaven, then we should be bringing forth this fruit from the seed that has been planted in us. So let's go back and we'll reiterate this text in Isaiah 30 and 23. And it's recorded. Then shall he give the rain of thy seed, that thou sow the ground withal, and bread of the increase of the earth, exactly the point, and it shall be fat and plenteous, and that day shall the cattle, shall the people feed in large pastures. So from here, let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 8, and we'll hit verse 12. And it's recorded. For the seed shall be prosperous. Thy, the vine shall give her fruit. And the ground shall give her increase. And the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of this people to possess all these things. So we see clearly most I got providing we're to the right side of the plumb line. And we're seeking after him and obeying his ways and not those ways that are of the world. So from here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 104. And we'll hit verse 13. And it's recorded. He watereth the hills from his chambers. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of thy works. From here, let's go to Psalms 65, verse 10. And it's recorded. Thou watereth the ridges thereof abundantly. Thou settleth the pharaohs thereof. Thou maketh it soft with showers. Thou blesseth the springing thereof. So we see, my brothers and sisters, this is that knowledge and understanding that's constantly being poured down for us from the Most High God. We have to obey those things that's contained here in Scripture, if providing we're seeking eternal life. So from here, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 2, and it's recorded. My doctrine shall drop as the rain, my speech shall distill 
as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herd, and as the showers upon the grass, which we know the grass are the people. So we have to clearly see and keep these things in mind as we're going through Scripture. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 10 and verse 13. And it's recorded. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in heavens, and he causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain, and bringeth forth the wind, which is the spirit, out of his treasures. From here, let's go to Psalms 46. Psalms 46 and verse 6. And it's recorded. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. From here, let's go back to Psalms 104. And verse 14. And it's recorded. He causeth the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man. Exactly the point. That they may bring forth food out of the earth. So we see, my brothers and sisters, God send us his wisdom, his knowledge, his understanding. Keep in mind that the seed that has been planted in us. Now, either that seed is going to produce, grow and produce those things contained in it, or we're going to allow that seed to be removed and replaced with another seed that's of the world. We clearly can't afford that to happen. That's why it's so important for us to till the ground from whence we've come. We have to make sure there is nothing in the field that's growing opposite of what's been planted in there by God. So we have to clearly make sure, um, understand these things, my brothers and sisters, as we are on this journey and as we search the scriptures for the truth of God's word. See, we can't allow these things to happen because we know that Satan has 666 ways to get at us. And I'm telling you, now that we have been, those of us that have been a recipient of the spirit of God's word, well, that battle has just got gotten intense the intensity of the battle is has gone up because we have to understand that these are the things that we're up against spiritual warfare in this world we have to clearly understand these things it's not physical it's always spiritual and we have to be able to identify those things when they present themselves to us that's why it's so important for us to continually search the scriptures for the truth of God's word and to not allow these individuals to plant other seed to remove us from what we know to be true in God's word. So keep these things in mind, my brothers and sisters, as we move forward on this journey. So let's reiterate this text again. He calls up the grass to grow for the cattle and the herb for the service of man that he may bring forth food out of the earth. From here, let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. And it's recorded. Tell you what. Just a second here. And it's recorded. And Yahweh said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after its kind whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So we see clearly, my brothers and sisters, that God has planted and given us the herbs of the of the field, and he has planted this tree, these elders, that's in the garden for our learning. So these things are for our good to learn from, my brothers and sisters, as we move through on this journey, we must keep these things in mind. 
Because keep in mind, there was two trees in the midst of the field. There was the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and also the tree of life. So which tree are we eating from? What seed is planted in the field? Because whatever seed is planted in your field, that seed is going to, you're going to bring forth that which is contained in that seed. So we have to make sure that that seed that's in us is of God. So let's sit uh, from here. Let's go to Genesis 1, 29 and 30. And it's recorded. And Yahweh said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for me exactly the point. So we see that these things have been created for our learning. These things have been created for us to learn from. So we have to understand these trees are representative of the elders, as we very well know here at KJBU. But we have to understand those things. We have to make sure that we're searching the scriptures for ourselves to make sure that what we're being taught is lining up with everything in scripture. We have to keep these things in mind because we have to always watch who we learn from, my brothers and sisters. Verse 30, and every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for me, and it, it, and it was so. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 24. And it's recorded, Neither say they in their heart, Let us now desire the Spirit of God, our guide, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter, in his season. He reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. Exactly the point. So we have, we have these weeks that God has provided for us. We have, uh, let's go to it. Let's pivot just for a moment. Go to Deuteronomy 16, 16. And it's recorded. Three times a year, in a year shall all the males appear before Yahweh, thy God, in a place which he shall choose, in the Feast of Unleavened Bread, and in the Feast of Weeks, and in the Feast of Tabernacles. And they shall not appear before the Spirit of God empty. So we see clearly, my brothers and sisters, we're to do our due diligence into making sure that we take advantage of these feast days. We have feast days here at KJBU daily. We have feast days uh, on the Sabbath. That is a feast day. So we have to understand that we have to take advantage, my brothers and sisters, providing if we're seeking after the Most High God. See, if we're not diligently doing our due diligence to, to search the scriptures and to do those things that's required of us, we, it's impossible that we could achieve those things that's uh, recorded here in scripture. We have to keep these things in mind because these are the things that's required. Now, we have committed these sins against God, and these, th these sins have been many. So we can't undo that, my brothers and sisters. The only way that we can achieve eternal life is to confess those things and to um, turn and do the works meant for repentance and to follow the ways of the Most High God and not the ways of the world. Because if we're constantly following after the ways of the world, we're constantly following after the ways of the flesh. And you can't, you can't be a service to flesh and a service to the Spirit. You can't do it. It's impossible that God is going to allow that to happen. It's recorded in his word. You cannot serve two masters. So from here, let's go back to where we left off. Uh, 
Jeremiah 5 and 24 will reiterate that text. And it's recorded. Neither say they in their heart, let us now desire the Spirit of God, our guide that giveth rain both the former and the latter in his season. He reserveth us unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. So from here, let's go to Matthew. Matthew 5 and 45. And it's recorded. That we may be children of your Father, which is in heaven, for he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So he's going to send that knowledge, my brothers and sisters, to us all. Keep one thing in mind. All of our people have been a recipient of the seed that had been planted in us by the Most High God. That being said, are we going to be receptive of the truth of God's word? Are we going to kill off that seed and receive seed from somewhere else? Or are we going to constantly hold to what we know to be true in the word of God? See, everybody is not going to be uh, receptive of what the truth is. And that's kind of unfortunate because a lot of us have become so addicted to this flesh, we can't see it any other way. And a lot of us, I mean, are so indoctrinated with the things that has gone on in these church buildings. It's just that they can't see the Word of God any other way. And that's the sad of it. See, if, if we're not searching the Scriptures, as we should, my brothers and sisters, how do we achieve these things that's of God? How do we do that? I was just talking with a young lady uh, last week, early part on my, on my job, and trying to discuss and to show her what the truth is in God's Word. And as you may have heard a lot of other people say, <laughs> she tends to believe that the Bible is written by man. And that's the sad of it. Because you can't, you can't find an author or by whom the Bible was written. The author is the Most High God. We have to understand these things, my brothers and sisters. We, we have to understand, if we're not reading and studying the Word for ourselves, how is it that we can believe all of these accusations that a lot of these men are making? How does that happen? How is it that we fall victim to listening to this foolishness and allow somebody to pull us away like that? We have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters. It's so extremely important that we do so. So from here, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. And it's recorded that I will give you the rain of your land in its due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that they may mayeth gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. Exactly the point. Because this is going to be contained in the seed that was planted in the earth in you. So once we have received the knowledge from above, these things should be growing. We should be producing these fruits or this offspring or these deeds according to that which is of God. Let's go from here. Let's go to Job. Job chapter 29 and verse 23. And it's recorded right here. And they waited for me as for the rain, for thought, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. 
from here, let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 34 and verse 22. And it's recorded. And thou shalt observe the feast of weeks of the first fruits of the wheat of harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. So we see, my brothers and sisters, that we have to continually receive our Oma daily. We have to continually till the ground from which we've come. This is important. For me, let's go to Job. Go back to Job. Chapter 37. And we'll hit 6 down to 13. And it's recorded. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth, likewise to the small rain, and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man, that all men may know his work. Then the beast go into the dens, and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind, and cold out of the north. By the breath of Yahweh frost is given, and the breath, the breadth of the waters is straightened. Also by watering he wearieth the thick cloud, he scattereth his bright cloud. Twelve. And it is turned around about by his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the whole world and the earth. Are you with me? We can't let this get past us. That's you. Keep that in mind. This is not the whole earth as you would think, one would think. This has been specific. This is Adam, male and female, Israel. Verse 13, he causeth it to come, whether for correction or of his land, for his land, or for mercy. So this word is going to either correct us and it's going to give us mercy. Now, there's a flip side to the coin because if we're not, willing to be a recipient of the word of God, if we want to follow, continually follow our own ways, then there's a negative. Okay, there's truly a negative to it. And you don't want a visitation from the Most High God. So from here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 104. In verse 15, and it's recorded. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to shine, and bread which strengthen man's heart. Exactly the point. So all of these things, my brothers and sisters, this wine is the pure form and the pure knowledge of God. This oil, of course, that's the spirit. You need that. Because that is what illuminates you. That is what gives you life. It gives you life. I constantly, let's, let's pivot for a moment. I constantly re reiterate this text because I want you to see it for yourself. Exodus 34. And we'll read from... Exodus 34, we'll read from 33 down, and it's recorded. Until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a, put a veil on his face. But when Moses went in before the Spirit of God to speak with him, he took the veil off until he came out. And he came out and spake unto the children of Israel that which he was commanded. Verse 35, And the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone, and Moses put the veil upon his face again until he went in to speak with him. So I always like to 
go to this text because it illustrates the wisdom and the knowledge that Moses had received of God. So if we understand that, his face shone. If you could picture a, a candle, and if you once you've light, lit the candle, that flame at the top, that's representative of the spirit. Because the spirit is what? It's light and including the life of men. Let's build on that. Let's let's go to uh let's go to John. John one and four. And it's recorded. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Are you with me? So again, if if you can understand the kerosene lamp, and you could picture this similitude. Now, at the very bottom, that holds the oil. That oil, that that portion of that lamp, that's the body. That's you. The oil is the spirit. Okay. Now that wick. That wick is the portion of your body that has been a recipient of the spirit. Once that spirit is received, you should illuminate. See, the spirit allows the wick to become lit. And once the wick is lit, it illuminates. And as long as there's oil in the lamp, that's you, that light will burn. So that oil should be contained in your heart, constantly burning for the Most High God. Are you with me? See, we have to be able to see these things that God shows us physically to get those understandings spiritually. So let's go back to Psalms 104, and we'll reiterate that text. Psalms 104 and 15. And it's recorded. And wine that maketh glad the heart of man, and oil to make his face to, to shine, and bread, the knowledge, which strengthen man's heart. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 12. And it's recorded. Therefore, the, for this reason, they shall come and sing in the height of Zion and shall flow together to the goodness of the Spirit of God for wheat and for wine and including for oil and for the young of the flock and of the herd and including their soul shall be as the watered garden and they shall not sorrow any more at all. Exactly the point. Because now you are being filled with the Spirit, the wisdom and knowledge and understanding of the Word of God. The rain. The rain. So from here, let's go back to Psalms 23. And we'll hit verse 5. And it's recorded. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. So my brothers and sisters, from here, let's go to a part of the teaching I would like to call Jehovah comes down as rain. From here, let's go to Hosea. Pour some information. Hosea. 6 and in verse 3 and it's recorded then shall we know if we follow on to know the spirit of God his going forth is prepared as the morning and he shall come unto us as the rain as the latter and the former rain unto the earth from here let's go to Psalms Psalm 72 Verse 6, and it's recorded. He shall come down like rain 
upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. Exactly the point. Even in the first part of the teaching, we see that there's knowledge is coming down. This is Jehovah. Keep that in mind. This is Jehovah. He shall come like rain upon the mown grass as showers that water the earth. For me, let's go to 2 Samuel. Second Samuel, chapter 23, verse 4. And it's recorded. And he shall be as the light of the morning when the sun riseth, even a morning without clouds. For thought, as the tender grass springing out of the earth by the clear shining after the rain. So we see clearly that the sea bears witness to the wisdom in which it was created that comes down from the Most High God that's going to bear fruit. This earth is going to bring forth fruit that was contained in the seed. Are you with me? We have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters, as we're going through Scripture. So for me, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 110. And we're going to hit verse 3. And it's recorded, Thy people shall be willing in the day of thy power in the beauties of holiness from the womb of the morning thou hast the dew of thy youth. From here, let's go to Micah. Micah, chapter 5, verse 7, and it's recorded. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people, watch this, as they do from the Spirit of God, as the showers upon the grass, upon the people, thou tarriest not for man, nor waiteth for the sons of men. Are you with me? For me, let's go to Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 10, right here at verse 1. And it's recorded, As ye of the Spirit of God reign in the time of the latter reign, for of thought, so the Spirit of God shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 15. And it's recorded. And the light of the king's countenance is life for thought, and his favor is a cloud of the latter rain. I mean, it's just, this Bible is just filled with, with the knowledge of God, and we have to understand What's going on, my brothers and sisters? We have to search the scriptures for ourselves to get the understanding and use those things that's, that God has created around us and to learn from those things and to interrogate them and to get the knowledge from them. So from here, let's go to Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. And it's recorded, sow to yourselves in righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Spirit of God till he come, and including rain righteousness upon you. So we see clearly, my brothers and sisters, that we have to do our due diligence to continually seek out the the truth of God's word and to understand the things that's recorded in scripture instead of listening to these men in these prison houses. Because one thing's for certain is that if the things out of these church buildings don't line up with what's recorded in scripture, my brothers and sisters, it is so very important that we have to remove ourselves from that. Because otherwise, I can guarantee you, 
you're going to be misled. You're going to be deceived. And the sad part about it, a lot of these men that's in these church buildings really think that they're teaching God's truth. The biggest problem that they have, they don't like to humble themselves to see and to find out what the truth of God's word is, especially if you're trying to show them something. Their biggest problem, the Christian pastors, the biggest problem that they have, they don't want to be wrong. They do not like to be wrong. But that's the point. Because if we're calling ourselves reading and studying the Word of God, and we're understanding or we're trying to find out the truth of God's Word, we have to make sure that the things that are coming out of this man's mouth lines up with Scripture, my brothers and sisters. Just don't let that guy go away and, and thinking that you have received something of, of God's Word, which is contrary to what's recorded. Don't just take that. Question that. Because if you're not going to question that, then you're taking that as truth. And you have to search the Scriptures to make sure that everything is lining up as it should. He shouldn't be telling you that there's blood in heaven for eternal atonement. Because if he's teaching that, he plans on not coming out of the sin business. Why? Because he's dead he teaching that there's blood in heaven for eternal atonement. That makes absolutely no sense at all. Christ only died once for sin. Once. So that suggests if he's teaching that blood is in heaven for eternal atonement, that means Christ died more than once for, for, his, for sin. And you can't find that anywhere recorded in Scripture. And if so, give me book, chapter, and verse. So we have to be careful, my brothers and sisters, and watch who we learn from. So let's reiterate this text again. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground, that hard ground. Break that up. For it is time to seek the Spirit of God till he come and rain righteousness upon you. So from here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 45 and verse 8. And it's recorded. Drop down, ye heavens, from above, and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open, and let them bring forth salvation, and let righteousness spring up together. For thought, I, the Spirit of God, have created it. Exactly the point. All of this is tied together, my brothers and sisters. The rain, the snow, hail, all of those things are representative of knowledge according to Scripture. We have to understand these things as we go through Scripture and as we're on this journey. From here, let's go to Isaiah 55, verse 10. And it's recorded. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from the heavens and returneth not there, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth and bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. Exactly the point. Why is the earth so synonymous with us, my brothers and sisters? Because what's planted in that dirt we have to bring forth. That's why it's so important for us to understand that because these vessels are from the earth. So their representative or the similitude to that is dirt. So God takes a seed, his seed, his word, plants it in you. Just as you plant seed of your favorite plant or your favorite flower or even a peach tree that you would like to have in your yard. God shows you that similitude. So the earth should bring forth that which is contained, which was planted in the earth. Are you with me? 
See, the instruction is coming from above. The seed that's planted in you recognizes the wisdom in which it was created. And if it recognizes that, then you in turn are going to bring that forth. Whatever that is contained in the seed, providing, providing you're to the right side of the plumb line. Keep these things in mind as we're going through scripture. See, because the earth, that's you, we have to bring these things forth. I try to tell everyone that I have an opportunity to, to speak with when we're talking about the earth, I always make mention to them that they want to pay attention to everything that's around them when they are in their travels. Because especially the ground, because you got trees, you have flowers, you have plants, you have a lot of things that's growing out of the earth. So God is showing us something. God is showing us something. And he's showing us that the earth holds life. So if the earth holds life and that's you, you should be bringing that forth. Because why? It was planted in you. See, those of us that have been a recipient of the Spirit of God, when we had our trip in Georgia, we have to understand we no longer breathe air. We breathe life. It's of the Spirit. So if the earth holds life and the seed that has been planted in us by God. We should be bringing forth that which is contained in the seed. Are you with me? God could care less about the ground after that produces what his seed has in it. God should be able to go through the garden and be able to pull fruit off your tree that's edible for him to eat. Why? Because it's of a seed that he planted. It's not from some other seed. The only seed that God plants is that which is of life. Are you with me? That which is of life. So we're going to pivot just for a minute. Let's go somewhere. Let's go to Second Address. Wait a minute. Second Address, chapter 4. And we're going to hit verse 30. And it's recorded. For the grain of evil seed hath been sown in the heart of Adam from the beginning. And how much ungodliness hath it brought up until this time? And how much shall it yet bring forth until the time of the threshing, to the time of the separation. See, this is that other seed, my brothers and, seed, uh, my brothers and sisters. This is that other seed. That's why it's so important for us to receive our home daily, because if we're not doing that, and if we're not tilling the ground from whence we've come, Satan can get in and put place that seed, remove that seed that has been planted in you, by the Most High God, and replace it with His. If, if you're not being careful, if you're not being attentive, if you're not paying attention. See, that's why this work that we have to do is daily. This is no let up. I say all the time, even in your dreams, my brothers and sisters, as we sleep, Satan can send you message through vision, and through dreams. We have to keep these things in mind. It's no let up with this guy. We have to protect the seed that has been planted in us by the Most High God. There's no turning back. There's no gray area now. Now that we have received of the Spirit of God, there's no divorce. There's no separation. It's all in or all out. There ain't no other way of looking at it. Because if you're all out, then you're going to have a problem because you have been a recipient of that spirit and you have turned away from it. It has to be all in. 
I want you to keep that in mind, my brothers and sisters, as we move forward on this journey. So let's reiterate uh, Isaiah 55 and 10 again. And let's record it. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not there, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower. Okay? To the feeder and bread knowledge to the eater, the ones that's learning. Are you with me? So from here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 21 and verse 2. And it's recorded right here, my brothers and sisters. Son of man, servant of man, set thy face toward Jerusalem and drop thy word toward the holy place, places and prophesy against the land of Israel. From here, let's go back to Hosea chapter 14 and verse 5. And it's recorded. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. I mean, it's just constant throughout scripture, my brothers and sisters, about the knowledge of God's word and how this rain works in, retro, in respect of the earth and how the seed that's planted in the earth recognizes the knowledge in which and the wisdom in which it was created. That's why we have to bring that forth. See, if we are to bring that forth, then, then one thing has happened at that point. Let me show it to you. Let's go to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, and we'll let verse 15. And it's recorded. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? So we clearly know that that's Jehovah, the creator of all things. So if we're bringing forth that which is contained in the seed, because the seed recognizes the rain, the knowledge from which and the wisdom in which it was created, and the earth has to bring that forth, then we too shall be in that image. Why? Those are the things that we're bringing forth that's contained in the earth. Are you with me? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meek, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Galatians 5, and 23, fruits of the Spirit. That's what that seed is going to bring forth. And there is no law to that. It's of the Spirit and not of flesh. Are you with me? So let's go back to our teaching. Let's go back to uh, Hosea 14, 5. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 27 and verse 6. As recorded, he shall cause them that come of Jacob to take root. Israel shall blossom and bud and fill the face, watch this, of the whole world with fruit. Israel, the 12 tribes, Zion, are you with me? For me, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 92. We'll hit verses 12 through 15. And it's recorded. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Spirit of God shall flourish 
in the courts of our guy. Exactly the point. They shall, they shall still bring forth fruit in old age. For thought, they shall be fat and flourishing. To show that the Spirit of God is upright, he is my rock. And there is no unrighteousness in him, exactly the point. Why? Because we have to be in that image. Everything that's recorded from 12 down to 15, we have to be in that image. See, if we don't, if we don't bring forth that which was contained in the seed, then again, we're going to bring forth some other fruit that's going to be contrary to what should be brought forth from the seed of God. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 44, verse 3, and it's recorded. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding upon thine offspring. See how clear this Bible is? All of this is from Jehovah. He comes down like what? Rain. It's the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom of the Word of God. See, it's up to us to, to understand the parables and the similitudes and the mysteries and the secrets of the Word of God. We have to open these things up. How? With the key. What is the key? precepts. I'll say it again, Elder Johnson, when we, uh, some years ago when my wife and I first started, I'll reiterate this again. Elder Johnson used to always say, the Bible is like your oyster. Once you understand the parables and the similitudes and the mysteries and the secrets and how to precept the Word of God, the Bible is your oyster. You can go anywhere and pull a pearl. He used to always say that. So I thought I'd reiterate that here. And that's no joke because the Bible is your oyster. And once you understand the things that's recorded here in Scripture and those similitudes and how parables and how things work and understanding these things, you can go anywhere and pull a pearl. Because this right there in front of us, my brothers and sisters, we just have to be diligent and humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. If we're not going to humble ourselves and listen, we're just a we're a big, we're a big mistake to ourselves when that happens. We only hurt ourselves. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we need to focus on what's recorded. We need to continue to search the scriptures for the truth. So from here, let's go to Job. <clears throat> Job chapter 5, verse 25. And it's recorded. Thou shalt know also that thy seed shall be great, and thine offspring as the grass of the earth. Exactly the point. From here, let's go to Job 29 and verse 19. And it's recorded. My root was spread out by the waters, and the dew lay all night upon my branch. Verse 20. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow, my bow was renewed in my power. From here, let's go to Psalms chapter 1, verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. It's all the wisdom and the knowledge that we've been a recipient of God to receive, my brothers and sisters. See, as long as this earth is being watered, and that seed is being tended to, we're going to continually produce that. We're going to continually produce that. 
which is contained in the seed. Let's go to Psalms 133 and verse 3, and it's recorded. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountain of Zion, for there the Spirit of God commanded the blessing, the wisdom, the knowledge, and understanding given, even life forevermore. Exactly the point. As the dew of the Hermon sanctuary. Keep that in mind. So my brothers and sisters, I'd like to go to this last part of the teaching that I would like to call the children. The children. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that a lot of times <clears throat> when when I make a thumbnail for a teaching that I've, I'm bringing forth, there's a lot of information in the thumbnail. And I'm, I kind of hope that you guys pay attention to that. Because we need to understand that when we're receiving the rain and the snow and the knowledge of God, again, we are the similitude of the earth. So understanding that and the seed that's been planted in us, well, that seed is going to recognize the wisdom in which it was created from the rain that's falling upon the earth, which is you. So no matter how we look at that, that seed is in you. So that wisdom and that knowledge is coming forth from God, from above, to us. So we have to produce that which is contained in the seed. Because if what's contained in the seed is bearing witness to that knowledge and that wisdom, we too should also be a witness and bear witness of what's in us. Are you with me? So the children, where do they come in to play? The children. The children have to grow as well. So using the children as a similar tool that we have to grow as a child. We have to put our and humble ourselves as a child. So we too can grow. See, we have to understand these things because when it's just like when a mother have brought forth her child. Now, the baby, baby does three things when baby's been bought, bought home. Eat, sleep, and poop. That's it. That's baby's job. Now, the more baby eat, the bigger baby get. So if we understand that concept and that similitude, it's the same conception, I mean the same thing with us. The more we learn the word of God, the more we know, the more we grow, just like baby. So we have to feed our children the same way. See, because we have to see the similitude. We're in the womb. We are in the womb. Now, when this flesh that we're in expire, then that seed that was planted in us, we have to bring that forth. Now, if we bring forth of that seed that has been planted in us, then it should be what? Spirit. Now we have a better understanding of Ecclesiastes 12.7. But I, we, we have to understand these things, my brothers and sisters, because, again, the children, we have to teach them. But we have to humble ourselves as a child to be recipient of what's contained in the Word. Because have you ever heard the term, uh, um, you're never too old to learn things? That's a fact. Or you may have heard the term, uh, what is it? You, could, you can't teach a dog, an old dog, new tricks, or something to that effect. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, we have to humble ourselves just as a child in order to be, to be a recipient of those things that's contained in Scripture because a child's mind, when we're rearing our children, they are more receptive to receive of that instruction that you give them. 
why do we why do I use this these children as an example because a lot of us that are of age and that are up in age it's hard to show them to get them to understand what things are it's harder for them to turn from what they've been doing as opposed to a child are you with me so we have to be we have to humble ourselves as a child. Okay, let's keep these things in mind. So from here, let's go to Proverbs. I'm going to pull some information. Proverbs 22 and verse 6. And it's recorded. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Exactly the point. Because we too have to understand these things. My brothers and sisters, it's being reborn again. We have to be receptive just as a child. We have to be reborn. See, because the first time we came in what? Flesh. This rebirth deals with being brought forth now in the spirit. We have to be born again. So we have to humble ourselves as a child. I want you to stay with me. So from here, let's go to Sirach, to some Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 7, verse 23. And it's recorded. Hast thou children, and struck them, and bowed down their neck from their youth. So we have to make sure that we're, we're doing rearing ourselves or rearing our children just as we should be being reared by Jehovah. I want you to stay with me because we have to humble ourselves. For those that are new here to this channel, you have to become humble. You have to become just as a child to be recipient of what's recorded here in God's word. So from here, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 4, and it's recorded. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture of admonition and admonition of the Creator. Exactly the point. See, because the more the earth receives the rain, the more we grow just as a child. I want you to stay with me. So when we're teaching our children, then we're giving them the inheritance. We're giving them the inheritance that's from the, from the Spirit of God. So once they have been trained up in that way, they would never depart from that. Are you with me? I want you to stay with me because, again, we have to be brought forth as the spirit and not flesh. So from here, let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 18. We're going to hit verse 19. And it's recorded. For I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Spirit of God to do justice and including doctrines and teachings for thought that the Spirit of God may bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. From here, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4, as recorded. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments, my instructions, and live. Exactly the point. See, because any other doctrine that's contrary to the word of God is doctrine of death. I want you to stay with me. It's a doctrine of death. Anything to the left side of the plumb line 
If you're being taught that it's okay to eat pork, if you're being taught that flesh is in heaven, if you're being taught that the Most High God dwells in buildings made with hands, you are learning a doctrine of death. And if providing you hold to that, you will be a recipient of death and not life everlasting. Why? Because it's all about the seed that had been planted in you. It comes right back to that. So let's reiterate this text again. Proverbs 4.4 4. He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. So from here let's go to 1 Chronicles. 1 Chronicles chapter 28 verse 9 and it's recorded. And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the, know thou the guide of thy father and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the spirit of God search of all hearts and understand of all imaginations of the thoughts if thou seek him, he will be found of thee for thought. But providing if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. So a lot of us tend to believe, my brothers and sisters, that we are seeking after God in these buildings, these church buildings. Let's go somewhere. Let's pivot just for a moment. Let's go to Acts and pull some information. We have to see this. Acts 17 and verse 24. And it's recorded. It says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So if you are new here to this channel and you're going into a building that they call a church, God dwells not in those buildings. You are the temple, not the building. That building belongs to another spirit, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the Most High God. You are the temple. We have to understand these things because if we're, if we're constantly going to these mausoleums, why do I call them mausoleums? That's where you place the dead. It is important that we read the Bible and study the Bible for ourselves. We have to make sure that everything lines up according to what's in Scripture. If these guys are telling you that this building is the house of God, it's important that you search the Scriptures to make sure that what is coming out of his mouth is lining up with everything recorded here in Scripture. Because if you're not doing that, you're going to be in a bad position once that flesh you in expire with God. You have done everything contrary to the word. The scripture says if a man he did on, let's go to it. Let's just go to it. Let's go to 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 11 and 34. And it's recorded. If providing any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye may that ye come not unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. We have to be mindful of these, my brothers and sisters. This is a serious walk. Okay? So from here, let's go to Second Timothy. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14 and 15. And it's recorded. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. Verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation, unto salvation, unto salvation through faith, which is in the anointed one, salvation. 
That's clear scripture, my brothers and sisters. We have to be as a child and humble ourselves. We have to understand the things that's recorded and those mysteries and secrets and those similitudes. From here, let's go to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and in verse 6, and it's recorded. If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be good. Thou shalt be a good minister unto Yahweh Shai, the Messiah, nourished up in the words of faith and including of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained. Exactly the point. From here, let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. Watch this. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk, the pure milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. So we see clearly, my brothers and sisters, that not only do we have to learn ourselves from the things that we have done against our God, but to keep our children from those things, we have to change, we have to train them in the ways in which they should go. And later they will not depart from that. Because this is the inheritance that we should be leaving our children. This word, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the truth of the Most High God. It should be passed down from one generation to the next. We can't continue to harp on those things that our forefathers have done. Again, we have to be the, the ones that, this generation that breaks that chain. Are you with me? We have to be the ones to do that. So let's read that text again, and it's recorded. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, exactly the point. Because we have to, we have to understand these things, my brothers and sisters, as we move through scripture. For me, let's go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 18 and verse 3. As recorded, and said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Exactly the point. See, because a lot of us are so stuck in our way, we don't want to do what other people is trying to help us with. Because we think that they're trying to turn us away from something, when in fact, we're only trying to help you and show you what the truth is. But a lot of us have become so stuck into our way and that's gonna cause a problem for us. That's gonna be a huge problem for those that are diligently or seeking after the most high God, but are not willing to turn from their way. That's gonna be a hard accomplishment. See, it's best to learn what the truth is now while we're yet in this flesh. Because if we wait until this flesh expire and thinking that we have done things right and find out that we have completely been totally opposite of that, that's going to be a hard wake-up call. Let's read this text again. And said, Verily I say unto you, except ye be converted and become as Little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of God. We have to become humble, my brothers and sisters. We have to become humble. Verse 4, Whosoever, therefore, for this reason shall humble, humble himself as this little child, the same as greatest in the kingdom of, God, of heaven. Now from here, let's go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to hit verses 15 and 16, and it's recorded. But speaking the truth in love, and may grow in, un, into him 
in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Let's reiterate this text again. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth, according to the effectual working and the measure of every part, maketh increase of the body unto the edification of itself in love. Exactly the point. From here, let's go to Second Peter. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 18. And it's recorded. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Creator and Savior, salvation the Anointed One. To Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. So, from here, my brothers and sisters, let's go to Deuteronomy. And we're going to pull some information here. Deuteronomy 6, and we're going to hit 4, and we're going to hit all the way down to 7. And it's recorded. Hear, O Israel, the Spirit of God our guide is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Spirit of God thy guide with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. Verse 7. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk to them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. Are you with me? So let's go down a little further. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontless between thine eyes. From here, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 9 through 10. And it's recorded. Only take heed to thyself and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Spirit of God, thy guide in Horeb, when the Spirit of God said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear, understand, perceive my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children. Exactly the point. Because we have to understand, my brothers and sisters, our children are the earth. We are the earth. The knowledge that comes down from above. We have to be an extension. They have to be an extension of us. Just as we have become an extension, providing we hold to the right side of the plumb line of the spirit. I want you to stay with me. Because this is the inheritance that was left us. Now, the things that we must do and the things that we have to uh, go up against and the things that, um, that's contrary, we have to fight these things off, my brothers and sisters. But this is the inheritance that we have received of God. This is the inheritance that we should be leaving to our children. The earth has to bring forth. And just as baby grow, the more baby eat and the more baby grow, the more bigger baby get. It's the same way with us. The same way with our children. We have to be the one that break this chain. We have to be the example to them that that's illustrated here in Scripture that Yahweh was to us. The rain upon the earth. So from here, my brothers and sisters, let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 78. 
and verse 4. And it's recorded. We will not hide them from their children, showing to the generation to come the praises of the Spirit of God, exactly the point, and his strength and his wonderful works that he hath done. We have to keep these things in mind, my brothers and sisters. Verse 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel. And he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. Are you with me? Verse 6 that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to the children. That they might set their hope in Yahweh and not forget the works of Yahweh, but keep his commandments. Are you with me? For me, let's go to Job. And pull some information. Job 1 and 3. And it's recorded. Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Exodus chapter 12. We'll hit verses 26 through 28. And it's recorded. And it shall come to pass, when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? That ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Spirit of God's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel and Egypt, when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses, and including the people bowed the head and worshipped. Verse 28, and the children of Israel went away and did as the Spirit of God had commanded Moses and including Aaron, so did they. So we have understand, my brothers and sisters, we have to pass this down to our children. We have to pass this wisdom, knowledge, and understanding down to them so they can understand what thus says the Most High God. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalm 78. And verse 5. We'll, we'll reiterate that again. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children. From here, let's go back to Psalms 147, and we'll hit verses 19 and 20. And it's recorded. He showed this word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He have not dealt so with any other nation, and as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So from here, my brothers and sisters, let's reiterate another text. Psalm 78 and 6. That the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children. From here, Psalms 102 and verse 18. And it's recorded. This shall be written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Spirit of God. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. So from here, let's go to Romans. Romans chapter 15. And we'll hit verse 4. And it's recorded. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. 
From here, let's go to Isaiah as we wind down past it. Isaiah 43 and verse 21. Let's record it. This people have I formed myself for thought. They shall show forth my praise, providing we're doing those things that's contained here in the word of God. From the wisdom and the knowledge that's fallen down from heaven upon us, this we shall do as well as our children. If providing, we're leaving them this inheritance. So we'll pull this last text, my brothers and sisters, and it's right here in Psalms. Psalms 22 and verse 31. I can't read my own handwriting. I'm sorry. Psalms 22. And 31, and it's declared, and it's recorded. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born, that he hath done this. So my brothers and sisters, I hope this teaching is edifying to you. I hope it helps someone on their journey. As we see here according to scripture, my brothers and sisters, the rain upon the earth, we have to understand that this is Jehovah. This is the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the word of God that was sent from him to us to bear witness of what's contained in the word of God. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that we have to continually clean this temple out. We have to continually till the ground from whence we've come. We have to receive our own daily. I can't stress this enough. And we have to continually stay connected to the scriptures because it's so very important that we must teach our children the ways of God. So when we have trained them up in the way in which they have should go, they too shall never depart from what's recorded in the word of God. So my brothers and sisters, uh, continually to search the scriptures for the truth Continually to till the ground from what you've come. Receive your Oma daily. I cannot express this enough. And never, ever let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. So until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom. <laughs>